Hello everybody and a very warm welcome to St. James Mangersfield for our online service today the 17th of January 2021. It's a great shame of course that we can't be meeting in person but I'm sure you'll all understand the reasons for not having public worship at the moment in the midst of this pandemic. I hope that you're picking up your news from the uh, weekly news sheet that is published electronically and I also hope that some of you will be able to join the virtual coffee morning which uh, starts at 11.30 and again you can find the link in the news sheet. So this morning we are continuing our journey looking at faith from different perspectives and I'm looking forward to hearing Jackie open God's word for us later on. So let's turn our attention to worship. Till 
grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And the words of an opening prayer. Loving God, we believe that everyone is a gift and belongs to your family, for we are made in your image and likeness. As a community of believers rooted in Christ, may we always celebrate your presence with us and appreciate both the gifts and responsibilities of belonging to this community of faith. Teach us your ways of love, respect and acceptance of all who come together in this church, in our families, in our community. And together we ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And we have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world, and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we may give ourselves to the service of God. Before we come to our time of confession, I would like to read a short passage from Proverbs, which is very apt for today's service. So this is Proverbs chapter 3, verses 1 to 8 and 11 to 12. My child, do not forget my teaching, but let your heart keep my commandments. For length of days and years of life and abundant welfare they will give you. Do not let loyalty and faithfulness forsake you. Bind them round your neck, write them on the tablet of your heart, so you will find favour and good repute in the sight of God and of people. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not rely on your own insight. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. It will be a healing for your flesh and a refreshment for your body. My child, do not despise the Lord's discipline or be weary of his reproof, for the Lord reproves the one he loves as a father, the son in whom he delights. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And we come to that time in the service where we are able to say sorry to God, to bring before him all the things that have troubled us in the last week or so, and to know that when we are truly sorry, we are forgiven. And so... Perhaps you will join me in this confession. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord our God, Creator and Redeemer of all, to you be glory and praise forever. 
From the waters of chaos, you drew forth the world and in your great love fashioned us in your image. Now, through the deep waters of death, you have brought your people to new birth by raising your Son to life in triumph. May Christ, your light, ever dawn in our hearts as we offer you our sacrifice of thanks and praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The night has passed and the day lies open before us, so let us pray with one heart and mind. And as we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you now and forever. Amen.
reading this morning is from Mark, chapter 14, verses 27 to 31 and 66 to 72. Jesus predicts Peter's denial. You will all fall away, Jesus told them, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I have risen, I will go ahead of you into Galilee. Peter declared, even if all fall away, I will not. Truly, I tell you, Jesus answered, today, yes, tonight, before the cock crows twice, you yourself will disown me three times. But Peter insisted emphatically, even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And all the others said the same. And moving on to 66, Peter disowned Jesus. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she looked closely at him. You also were with the Nazarene, Jesus, she said. But he denied it. I don't know or understand what you're talking about, he said and went out into the entrance. When the servant girl saw him there, she said again to those standing round them, this fellow is one of them. Again, he denied it. After a little while, those standing near said to Peter, surely you are one of them, you are a Galilean. He began to call down curses and he swore to them, I don't know this man you're talking about. Immediately, the cock crowed the second time. Then Peter remembered the word Jesus had spoken to him. Before the cock crows twice, you will disown me three times. And he broke down and wept. This is the word of the Lord. Well, we're thinking about being faithful towards God today. It can be quite a challenge. I'm going to refer to three people whose faithfulness to God was challenged. Two are from the Bible and another was very much in the news not so long ago. The first is Mary, the mother of Jesus. And we have recently celebrated the birth of Jesus and I wonder if God had another plan in mind if Mary had not responded positively to the angel Gabriel when he came to tell Mary that she was to give birth to the Son of God. She was a young girl, probably about 14, and was expecting to marry Joseph through probably an arranged marriage. To be pregnant out of wedlock would be a huge scandal. And it was a scandal that very likely would remain with her throughout her life for those who knew her. But in spite of this, her response to the angel was, in effect, her response to God. When she said, I am the Lord's servant, may it be to me as you have said. We meet the second person in our reading today. It tells us about Peter. First, emphatically insisting, 
even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. But just a short while later, he denies knowing Jesus three times. St Matthew records that Peter went outside and wept bitterly. He was a broken man at that point, whose faithfulness towards God was not strong enough then when it came to the crunch. Our third person is a Christian peasant woman from Pakistan known as Asya Bibi. And you may have heard of her as she was in the news quite a lot in recent years. She was working in the fields one day with some Muslim women. It was so hot that she went to drink some water from the well and she used the cup that was there for the purpose. There then followed an outcry from the Muslim women because in their eyes she had now contaminated the cup and made the water impure. While she was under the vicious attack of the women, she said, love one another, that is what Jesus teaches us, and I'm sure your Muhammad would agree with him. This so aroused their anger that there was even more shouting, saying she was a dog, and Jesus was a dog too, a fatherless bastard. For this incident, she was accused of blasphemy and sentenced to death by hanging. She was at one time offered freedom in exchange for renouncing her faith in God. But she exchanged freedom for over five, uh, nine years of abuse and humiliation and missing her children growing up. You may have read about the attempts across the Western world to bring about justice and eventually she was acquitted. But she now lives under an assumed name in hiding and never able to return to her homeland. I started this talk saying that being faithful towards God is a challenge and we have seen how three people met this challenge. We might ask ourselves, which of these three are we most like? And what can we learn in our walk of faithfulness to God? Are we like Mary? I have sometimes prayed that I would do whatever God asked of me, but do I actually mean it? What if he asked me to do something I really didn't want to do, which perhaps was a challenge to my orderly life, which meant sacrifice or the disapproval or misunderstanding of others. I don't know the answer to this. Are we like the Peter who disowned knowing Jesus? I haven't actually said that I didn't know him, but I am ashamed to say I have kept quiet when I should have spoken up. An incident occurred some time ago. I was a tutor on an open university summer school in Warwick. Some of us were relaxing at the end of the day when one of them asked if anyone's a Christian as he was going to tell a joke. I kept quiet. Why? Well, I was the only woman there. I was young, quite shy, and felt vulnerable. These may be reasons, but it isn't an excuse. And I have always regretted not owning up. Would I be different now? I hope so, but I don't know the answer if it came to the crunch. It very much came to the crunch for Asya Bibi and many, many other Christians in the persecuted church who suffer so much yet keep faithful to God. 
there are some horrific stories of their suffering. Would I be strong and keep faithful to God in similar circumstances? I don't know the answer to that question. We could indulge in feelings of guilt and shame at our relatively easy lives. Or we could look for ways of preparing ourselves to be faithful to God when challenged. The incident I referred to when I failed to own up to being a Christian was a time when my faith was perhaps more one of the intellect rather than the heart. That has changed for me, and it changed most when I accepted in my heart that Jesus loved me and that it was a free gift, not something to be worked for. Those of you who are familiar with the Bible will know that Jesus wonderfully restored Peter. He asked Peter three times, do you love me? It was a question to his heart and then Jesus confirmed his calling to be the leader of the young developing church where his faithfulness to God was tested time and time again, a test he never failed. I think that Mary and Asia Bibi both responded to their challenge from their heart. And maybe this is how we might respond to challenges when our faithfulness to God is tested. Our heart relationship is developed by getting to know him. And how we do this would be another talk, but we could start very simply by focusing on his love, which is displayed in the Gospels, and asking him to reveal his love to us through them. At the moment, we don't face the challenges to our faithfulness to God in the same way as the persecuted church. But there will be some opportunities to be faithful to him in our lives here. I have to work out between me and God what being faithful to him means for me in my stage in life, in my stage of spiritual growth, and it may sometimes be costly. It is all too easy to become flabby in the flesh, as we know during this pandemic. But let's not become flabby in our faith as well. Our personal faith exercise will help build strength to face bigger challenges that may come in the future. I have just read a very interesting book about Asia Bibi's suffering and uh, I very much recommend it to you if you would like to read it for yourselves. It is very sobering and perhaps challenges us very much in the Western world.
In response to the reading and those wonderful words from Jackie, let's affirm our faith in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray together. Father God, we bring our prayers to you, remembering that you have been a faithful God in our lives. We thank you for the scientific breakthrough which has enabled vaccines to be given against the pandemic. We pray that the distribution of these vaccines will be swift, fair and available to all countries and that it will be effective in closing down the virus. We pray, Lord, that you will come to our aid in defeating it. We remember the doctors and nurses and all NHS staff at this time of great stress and long hours for them. May they encourage one another and be given the strength needed for this testing time. We remember those physically or mentally affected by the virus and pray for your healing touch upon them. Help us as your people to be alert and faithful in caring for those around us. 
we remember all those required to homeschool for their children. May this be a time of blessing upon family life. May those who are struggling with overload receive the help they need. We remember those suffering financially through loss or reduction of their job. May the available grants and help schemes be quickly delivered to those in need. Give wisdom to our government in managing resources, setting appropriate levels of lockdown and cooperating internationally. Give wisdom to us all in our day-to-day -day lives, changed as they are, to play our part responsibly in defeating COVID. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for your church, for ourselves here at St. James. Help us, as St. Paul says, to spur one another on to good deeds. And like the Apostle Paul, to accept your forgiveness when we come up short and then press on with your work. Help us to remain faithful in the promises we have made to you and to others. We remember the wider church. Bless the leaders of your church. May they walk closely with you and equip them with the compassion, wisdom and skills they need. We pray for your protection over all those who are persecuted for their faith. We thank you for the work of Open Doors. This week they presented to Parliament an annual review of 50 countries where there is most persecution of Christians. We pray that this will inspire MPs and government to defend these who face increasing discrimination during the pandemic. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Finally, we remember all those who are sick in body, mind or spirit, including those listed on our weekly newsletter. In a few moments of quiet, let us pray for those on our hearts, asking God to meet all their needs, to heal them and to bless them. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. As we remain in an attitude of prayer, may we say the collect together. Eternal Lord, our beginning and our end, Bring us with the whole creation to your glory, hidden through past ages and made known in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Normally at this point we would conclude our prayers together by saying the Lord's Prayer. But this week something a little bit different and I'm going to play a modern, very modern version of the Lord's Prayer which is sung by three young girls. I realise this may not be everybody's cup of tea um, unless you're like me and young and down with the kids of course but whether you like it or not you can't deny that these three girls are full of joy.
So thank you very much for joining us in worship today. And please be assured that you are all very much in our thoughts and prayers at this time. And we will be thinking of you in the coming week. And just pray that you will all stay safe. And so a closing prayer followed by the grace. And so we pray together, loving God, we know that when two or more gather in your name, you are always with us. Thank you for being with us today and inspire us as we leave this service to love and to serve you always. And we ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Thank you and bless you all.